So I'm gonna give you my opinions on who I think are the best overall stocks and shares ISA providers in the UK for this year. I'm gonna show you how to use the platforms a little bit. We'll take a look at the fees and how to reduce those fees on each platform where possible. And most importantly, I'll tell you my key concerns about the services because all of these brokers have some form of compromise that you need to consider. As this is the best ISA video and not the seventh best ISA video, I'm not gonna be covering every broker in the UK today. I wanna to look at what I consider to be the best in class for each different style of investing and for a few different types of people with different types of portfolios. All of the brokers we're gonna to discuss today are authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority and so are covered by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. And most importantly, are subject to CAS rules meaning you get the same level of protection and regulatory oversight on all of the platforms. What that means is your investment should be ring-fenced, separate to the company assets. So if a platform goes down, those assets should be held separately. And if for some reason they're not, you're covered up to £85,000 under the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. What that means for me is I have peace of mind using all of these brokers. In the description are links to all of the services I discuss. Some are affiliate links, which means we both get something if you sign up. But plenty of them are not, and I've detailed which are and which aren't, and what the deals are next to the links. First up though, don't sign up to a broker just because they have a sign up bonus. Make sure it's the right broker for you. And secondly, I think it's worth saying, none of the brokers are on this list today because of the affiliate scheme. They're solely because of the merits of the platform from the user perspective. I have never taken sponsorship or payment directly from a broker to make content, so that I can sit here in front of you and be impartial when reviewing these brokers. So you know that the words coming out of my mouth are my own words, and we're gonna look at the good and the bad today. Let's start with Invest Engine. They're a relative newcomer to the market, founded in 2016 by one of the co-founders of Gumtree, who at the time said, no one else is providing long-term investors with the kind of platform and tools they need. Other platforms promote, in our opinion, short-term speculative behavior. You've lost everything. To be fair to them, when you look at the offering, I have to say, I think they are delivering on this promise of providing a modern, easy to use platform for long-term investors who are not interested in stock picking. The user experience is seamless both on the desktop and the app, and it's got this really clean, easy to use feel about it. This is a platform for those who just want funds. There's no individual companies here. There are over 550 exchange traded funds to choose from. You can get equities, REITs, bonds, commodities, all from multiple brands. So you're not just stuck with say Vanguard only funds. You can look around to see if another provider has a cheaper version of the same type of fund and their filters make this really easy to do. As an example, I can type a keyword here, say USA. I can then sort them by cost, pick a specific provider if I want. And then if I click on more here, I have the ability to filter if a fund is accumulating or not, and also sort by ESG preferences, which I know for a lot of people will be a nice feature. And let's say then I add a selection of funds to my portfolio like this. I'm just picking random funds here, please don't copy this allocation. Once I press continue, I can then select the weighting of the portfolio. So every time I invest money, it will be split across the portfolio in these weightings. Really nice feature. And they also have a one button rebalance tool. So you can just press it and get back to those allocations in the future. That's really good if you want a mix of asset classes, like you want a portfolio with REITs and bonds and equities in it. It's also worth noting they offer fractional shares. So you can buy bits of funds, meaning the platform is ideal for beginners with a little bit of money to invest each month. Also, as well as those of you with larger portfolios due to their attractive fee structure. So on the fees, Invest Engine offer two services. There's the DIY platform, which is the one I just showed you, where you do it yourself. And then they have the managed product, which is where they pick investments on your behalf and they apply a charge of 0.25% a year for that. If you use the DIY service, there are no fees from Invest Engine at all. The only fees you pay are the fund fees, which are the same as any platform you go on. I've confirmed directly with Invest Engine that no other fees exist for using this side of the platform, so there's nothing sneaky or hidden behind the scenes. But if you wanted to raise an issue about Invest Engine, you would probably say this fee point is potentially the biggest concern here. I know many will be worried about a service that appears to charge nothing, especially because other brokers in the past were fee free and have now added a lot of fees to their offering. Free Trade is an example of this. Any business needs to make money, right? And at some point, we may see these fee structures change. But I regularly change my ISA provider so I can take advantage of the best offers in the market at the time. Also, remember you have the same protections with these guys as you do say with Vanguard UK or Hargreaves Lansdowne. Currently they're funding the platform through funding rounds. I did see a pitch deck as well that I got hold of that was sent directly to these investors that said at some point they might explore premium account services, sort of bolt on features to bring in revenue. 
their model at the minute appears to be get a proportion of their users onto the managed service. So for them, it's all about growing their market share and user base in the hope more people use the managed service. For that reason, they also have a really attractive sign up bonus offer at the minute. If you sign up using the link below and deposit at least £100, you get £25. Also, if you transfer an ISA with a value of more than 10K by the 2nd of May, you get another £100. Next up is Vanguard. 8 trillion under management, the inventor of index funds with a track record going back 47 years. Buy and hold is eternal. <laughs> so just to be clear, you have Vanguard, the fund manager, and you will see their funds and products on most platforms that we discuss. So you can buy Vanguard's products pretty much on any broker. The Vanguard UK platform is Vanguard's direct-to-consumer platform that sells Vanguard's funds. It's like going straight to the manufacturer if you would to buy a product. The benefit here really is the brand and reputation. You're putting your money with a giant of a business and you can be relatively confident that Vanguard will still be here in 50 years. You know, let's be honest, you can't have the same level of conviction with a new startup like InvestEngine. Like I said, InvestEngine has the same protections as Vanguard from a regulatory perspective, but it's still a startup, right? So if you're looking for a place to set up an ISA and never move it, then Vanguard is a solid option for that reason. The website has been through a recent redesign, so it's looking a bit fresher than it was. Investing is relatively simple, but I still think there's work to do here to bring it into the modern age. I have a video on how to use the platform, which has over 100,000 views. And when you consider Vanguard UK has about 400,000 customers, this tells me a large proportion of people that use the platform are seeking out help on how to use it. There's still no app. They do have one in America, but not in the UK. You can access it through a browser on your phone if you want, or desktop. And I have heard rumors that there will be an app dropping later this year. Look, some people want an app, some people don't, but it does look strange in the modern world to not have one. Where is it? There are 86 funds to choose from, between bonds and equities mainly, and there are some constructed portfolio products as well. There's like the life strategy funds and target date retirement funds, which are mixed bond stock portfolios and are very popular. They don't have anything like REITs on here currently. Now, when you sign up, Vanguard will say you either need to deposit £500 or commit to investing £100 per month. They don't actually seem to enforce that rule all that much. You could just start with a deposit of £100 and then top up less if you want on a monthly basis if you don't want to contribute more than that. Maybe they'll close that loophole after this, I don't know. They do offer fractional share investing on mutual funds, but not on ETFs. That means if you want to buy, say, the FTSE All World ETF, you will need the full £85 odd to buy it or whatever the price is on that day. And if you invested, say, £100, you would end up with one share of it plus some change sitting on your available cash balance. This needs to be a consideration for people who want to invest less than this in specific ETFs because what might actually happen is you need to save up money on a monthly basis before you can actually invest. Or you could just buy a fund, like a mutual fund, instead to get around this. In terms of the fees, so you have a fund fee, just like you do on any other platform, but then you have a platform fee of 0.15%. This is the fee for using the Vanguard website. This caps out at 375 per year once you have more than 250K on the platform. There's also this dealing fee that if you wanna buy ETFs instantly, you see that here. It's this live price £7.50 thing. So this is essentially if you wanna buy an ETF or exchange traded fund at that price right there and then. Honestly, just don't use that. Only buy using the next available price button to avoid that fee. It just means basically that Vanguard group all the purchases together for that one day and then buy in one job lot to save on the fees. If you're looking to execute at that price there and then, the £7.50 is gonna likely negate any benefit of doing that unless you're investing in a very large amount. One benefit of Vanguard is they pay you 2.2% interest on cash held on the platform. But people have messaged me recently annoyed that this appears to have been capped now at this level. When you consider they'll be getting closer to 4% on the same cash, you might see this not as a generous benefit anymore, but it's still better than most platforms. But for me personally, I hold little to no cash inside of a stocks and shares ISA anyway. I have my money invested, but I know some people do like to hold cash. The platform is honestly very cheap altogether, although this platform fee of 0.15% now makes it expensive, say, to an invest engine or trade in 212, where you can actually buy Vanguard's funds cheaper than going directly through Vanguard. It's obviously quite hard to beat free. Also consider that this percentage fee for larger accounts can actually add up and you'll often find that it's cheaper for you to use fixed fee brokers. I'll cover one of those in a second for you. Really, most of my concerns with the Vanguard platform center around this point that you're going direct to the supplier and you're getting a worse deal, higher fees and a smaller selection of funds. When Vanguard's main business is collecting fees on $8 trillion worth of funds, I question why they don't just make their UK platform the best place to get them so that they can maximize that fee collection. 
There are also some other commonly raised concerns around the Vanguard platform online, especially if you look at review sites. One that I see come up time and time again is a lack of robust two-factor authentication on the platform when you log in. Now, in Vanguard's defense, you do need to go through a process like this when you take money off the platform. And as far as I understand, I've never tested because I've never taken money out, but they do only pay into a bank account that you have linked, limiting people's ability to steal your money. I found this post from Vanguard saying it is coming in the coming months, but as I log in right now, it's still just username and password. The thing about Vanguard is you just can't put a price on peace of mind. And what for me personally, the regulatory protections that all the brokers I discussed today fall under are enough for me to you know, trust my money on those platforms. I know for many, they want a long track record of delivery as well. With Vanguard, you are getting direct access to one of the best reputations in the investing space, and that carries a lot of value and peace of mind for people. That's really hard for me to sit here and value. They are still a cheap way to invest, even if they're not the cheapest, and those points are why they make my list. There is no current sign-up bonus for joining the platform, though. Next, I want to talk about trading 212. To many, 212 are going to feel like a new arrival to the market, but this business has been going for nearly 18 years now. And in that time, it's established itself as one of the biggest brokers in both the UK and in Europe. This platform was closed to new users, but now it's open again. Don't let the name fool you. While this is a platform that you can trade on, it's also very suitable for just index fund investors and for people buying individual shares. This platform really is an insanely good all-rounder. I've used them for my ISA in the past because of this. The user experience, in my opinion, is the best on the market. It's very intuitive with all the funds being split out here into different sections and the stocks on a different side, so it's easy to navigate. They have over 9,000 individual companies to choose from and over 1,000 different funds. So there's everything you could ever need on here. They offer fractional shares as well, so you can pick up an investment for as little as a quid. This is a great platform for portfolios of all sizes and monthly investment amounts. Similar to the Invest Engine setup as well, you can create what 212 call pies. They allow you to set the allocation to investments and then split your money across them automatically. You can have multiple running at once. They will also auto reinvest dividends and you can set up auto payments into them. And there's this nice social aspect to them as well, where you can share your pie so others can view it, or you can copy other pies if you like them. Friend! Now it's the fees where 212 really shines. So the only fee for using the ISA is an FX or foreign exchange fee of 0.15%. This is if you buy investments not listed in pounds. This is very reasonable when you consider that Hargreaves Lansdowne and Interactive Investor charge 1% and 1.5% respectively. And Free Trade, who are probably 212's closest rival, are charging at a minimum double this, as well as the accounts costing money on a monthly basis as well. I'll give you an example just to make sure that when you're on 212, you can avoid this fee. If you type VUSA, which is Vanguard's S&P 500 fund, you can see there's three options. Each one is a different fund in a different currency. The top one is Swiss francs, the second one is British pounds, the third one is in euros. So to avoid any fees for foreign exchange, just make sure you're buying funds listed in pounds. Obviously, if you're buying American businesses like Tesla, you will incur this fee, but that's the same on any platform really. And this is probably the cheapest FX fee on the market. The only other fee you need to be aware of is this fee here when you top up using your card. There's a fee of 0.7% once you go over 2,000 pounds. Now you can simply avoid this just by doing an instant bank transfer instead. It's super easy to connect to your bank and it's totally free. So it's possible to invest in funds on here completely free, apart from the fund fees that you pay on all platforms, of course, and to buy individual companies at the same time for essentially cheaper than anywhere else on the market. Like I said, it's just an amazing all-in-one platform. What I like most about 212 as well is they found a way to deliver all of this sustainably. They make all of their money on the CFD arm of the app. I don't personally mess around with CFDs as the majority do lose their money. But if people want to, you know, that's their choice. They're clearly ring fenced here on a separate tab. So I don't think it's easy for people to just accidentally use them. And their presence means an insanely cheap ISA offering. I think one concern people will have is the hangover from the fact that 212 shut its front doors to customers. For many people, they were not really happy with the explanation as to why this happened. The reason they said was that it was too busy and they couldn't handle all of the demand, so they shut the front door to allow them to scale their operation. In that time that they had their doors closed, they brought in a new board of directors into the UK arm and seemed to have really separated the UK entity from the rest of the European business. Whatever the reason was that they closed, I'm reassured now by the fact that the UK arm has a separate board of experienced finance professionals running it, and also that they've been allowed to open by the UK regulators. So whatever issue they had is behind them. I think this platform is gonna do really well. It's pretty hard to beat in terms of fees and the fact that you can buy individual companies and funds in one place. Also as well, the user experience is really nice. 
I'm going to be using 212 this year for my ISA because I want that ability to buy both at the same time. I also like the fact that it's a profitable business and it's been running for nearly 18 years successfully. 212 have a very attractive sign-up offer for new users as well. Use my link in the description. You'll get a free share worth up to £100 if you deposit £1 on the platform. And if you're opening a new ISA with them before the end of April, any money you pay into the ISA over that year, they'll give you 1% cash back on. But the key thing is, you're going to need to open an ISA account and a general investment account because I think they pay the cash back into the general investment account. I guess that just stops people accidentally going over their ISA allowance. For some reason, you don't get your free share. This is because the tracking isn't working due to Apple blocking it. So there's an easy fix. Press these three lines in the bottom right here, scroll down to where it says promo code, and just type in D-A-M-I-E-N for Damien. Make sure you spell it correctly and then all the incentives should work. Okay, next is free trade. If you don't fancy 212 for whatever reason, but you still want a combination of being able to buy stocks and funds in one place for relatively cheap, then consider free trade. This is an app-based platform with over 1 million customers. They have a lovely, intuitive, modern feeling user interface and a massive selection of funds and individual stocks to choose from. The reports have over 6,000 investments on the platform. I have an ISA with free trade and first covered them back on the channel, my third ever video three years ago. Since then, they've been through a lot of changes on the platform, namely around the fees, as the platform basically battles to find a way to be profitable. So instead of being a platform like Vanguard that charges a percentage fee per year, they operate a fixed fee model for their accounts. They have three levels here, but the ISA is only included in the standard and plus accounts, which are $4.99 and $9.99. But the plus account also includes access to a SIP, making this more affordable. Now it does say at the bottom here that these fees will be increasing to $5.99 and $11.99. But if you pay the fee annually, you'll benefit from the old pricing structure. Now at a glance, these fees don't look that attractive and probably not for investors when they're just starting out who want to invest small amounts on a monthly basis. Paying six to 12 quid a month on a hundred pound monthly investment is not worth it in the slightest. But these fixed fee models can actually provide a cheaper way to invest for those with larger account balances, where the fixed fee is cheaper than the percentage fee. If you have a balance of say around 70K on Vanguard, the fixed fee at 599 is cheaper and gives you more choice of investment. They also charge an FX fee though for purchases on investments, not listed in pounds. From the 11th of April, the FX fee charged when trading stocks priced in US dollars or euros will change to 0.99% on your basic plan, 0.59% on your standard plan, and 0.39% on our plus plan. These FX fees are cheaper than some of their competitors like HL, but they're higher than, say, trading 212. There is a way to offset these fees. So free trade pay interest on cash held on the platform at varying amounts depending on how much you hold with which plan. On the standard account, you get 1% up to 2K, so that's £20 per year in interest. But on the plus account, you get 3% up to 4K, which is 120 quid a year, and basically means you get the account for free. But as I said, I don't like holding that much cash in my ISA, especially for the purpose of just offsetting fees. I think there's an opportunity cost you need to consider with the fact that you could just have that money in the market working for you. And I don't really like performing like gymnastics to try and gamify the fees or get around them. I think, you know, especially when platforms exist that are just cheaper all the way around. I've included free trade as they offer a cheaper way to access shares and funds for people with larger accounts than say traditional brokers like Hargreaves Lansdowne. And the combination of a SIP and ISA in one place wrapped inside this 9.99 fee is an attractive offer. I next want to talk about Hargreaves Lansdowne. These guys are one of the biggest platforms in the UK with over 1.7 million customers. The company's so big, it's actually part of the FTSE 100. Very well established legacy broker that comes with as many features as you could possibly imagine. And one of the largest selections of funds and investments out there. You can do anything with them. Like many others in the UK, this is where I started my investing journey. I've moved away now as I didn't like the fees, but I might return to them in the future as some of you might think that they do offer good value right now. The issue is they just don't provide good value for smaller portfolios. The platform fees on funds, as you can see, are 0.45%. This is high even compared to Vanguard 0.15%, but they fall significantly as your balance gets larger. But there is a way to get around this. ETFs or exchange traded funds, the fee is capped at 45 pound per year. So if you were invested in ETFs instead, a portfolio of 30K on HL is cheaper than a Vanguard one in terms of the annual fee. The issue is you then have to pay dealing fees on purchasing these ETFs. You don't pay these dealing fees on funds, but the platform fee is higher. You would pay 12 quid a month just to buy one ETF through these dealing fees. That does fall if you're a more active trader. Smaller accounts, in my opinion, won't see value here versus holding funds on some other platform we've already discussed. But if you have a really big portfolio or you want to invest a large amount on a month, I can see how this platform does become more attractive. 
And you know, if you have two million quid in the market, I might be see I might see how you're willing to pay a little bit extra to have all the bells and whistles that HL provides. Okay, now it's time for some honorable mentions. So if you're an investor with a larger portfolio, other fixed fee platforms like iWeb and Interactive Investor are actually quite attractive. So Interactive Investor have a plan that's $9.99 a month that gives you one free purchase a month. So if you're buying a single investment like a global index, this fixed fee of £120 a year-ish is really competitive. And they allow you to set up regular investments into those purchases for free. So index investors into the same fund can invest pretty cheap here. With iWeb, you pay £100 to set up the platform, but they'll refund this to you if you transfer in more than 5k initially. You then pay £5 every time you make a purchase. They do have a very high FX fee of 1.5% though. But if you're buying UK listed funds and say you only want to buy once a month or even better yet, like you buy once a year or once every quarter, you can get the fees right down here. At the end of the day, guys, investing in any form is better than not. So you go with the platform that feels right for you that you're most comfortable with. There is no right or wrong answer. I'm just giving you my opinion here. There are plenty of great options. And as long as they're authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority and they're covered by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme, that's the main thing that matters. I'll put a link below where you can input the name of a broker of your choice and you can get the info on if they're correctly regulated. For me and my portfolio, you just can't beat Trading212 and Invest Engine currently, in my opinion. The user experience, the fund selection, the fees, all great. I'll be using 212 as I want the ability to buy both funds and individual companies this year. But I'll continue holding my SIP on Vanguard because I think the platform's great, I trust it for a long-term investment, and the fees aren't too bad. I also like having multiple pots covered by multiple financial services compensation scheme insurance. Remember the rule is you can only pay into one type of each ISA each financial year, but you can have as many of them as you want. So I have ISAs with a number of providers that I've kind of collected over the years, and then whichever I pay into that year, I'm locked into that one in terms of the new 20k allowance. I'll be happy to answer any other questions like that about ISIS below. So fire away and I'll make sure that I answer as many over the next week or so or next month as I possibly can. I'm also going to pin the top comment as like an FAQ of the commonly asked questions that I always get every year. So before you ask a question, maybe just take a read of that and see if I've already answered it in there. Anything else, just let me know below, guys. Thank you so much.